yeah, music for me is, is something that I personally want to use and have been using to do work far beyond music, you know. And, uh, you know, one of the things in particular that I'm very, very interested in is, is sickle cell disease, you know, which is a disease that I actually suffer from. Um, it's a disease that has, yeah, it's hit close to home. And, you know, even before I became a musician, you know, and you know this, you know, it's like, you know, being African in the diaspora, you know what I mean? You only have so many options, you know, you could be a doctor, you could be a lawyer, you could be an engineer, you could be a businessman, or you could be disowned, <laughs> you know? And so actually, you know, before I was really even heavy into music, I was on a path to become a doctor, you know, and it came from the idea of, you know, me, you know, having been impacted by sickle cell disease, you know? Um, but, you know, throughout my life, you know, I had this two sides. And one side was, you know, the medical side of me. And then the other side was the musician side of me, you know. And as I got older, uh, I realized that I didn't have to choose between the two, that they could be one and the same, essentially. And so to this day, I have a nonprofit uh, called All One Blood. And, uh, you know, we work to change the conversation around sickle cell disease. And what, you, what we did discussed earlier that it doesn't just affect black people. Yes, yes. And, you know, there's a lot of misconceptions about sickle cell disease. Um, you know, I think that there's a very, very particular view on it um, where oftentimes the conversation around it is dominated by the idea of race, um, which, you know, obviously has some sort of a, a basis to. Uh, but what's crazy is when you open up the lens on a global perspective, you realize that there are so many people uh, beyond any particular race that have sickle cell disease. You know, I mean, the disease in and of itself came from a mutation um, where people that were around uh, the equator and in tropical areas had to develop something to protect them from malaria, you know? So anyone that lives around the equator, it wasn't just Africans, you know what I mean? So it was like the Mediterranean, Greece, you go to India, you go to, you know, Latin America. There are places all over the world that were affected, you know? And it's like, if you actually looked at the faces, I remember the first time I seen uh, a white face, you know, and it was a mother, and she was talking about her kids having sickle cell disease. I was like, and I knew they existed, but it was like me and a unicorn for the first time. It's like, wow, really? Um, but that's the thing is like when you but when you make it only a race conversation, it doesn't allow other people to be, you know, a part of the conversation and to participate in it and support it. You know, it's like when HIV AIDS first came out, people thought it was a, a disease for homosexuals. Right. And then they realized that anybody could get it. And it wasn't until then that people started paying attention in a different kind of way because they were like, no, this is, we got to protect our, ours from getting, from not getting it. You see what I'm saying? So for us, we're just about changing the way in which we view sickle cell disease. Um, and ultimately, I think that in doing so, it'll allow us to accelerate uh, towards finding a cure for the disease. So in part, you were inspired to try and find a cure. Oh, definitely. Medicine. Definitely. Is it? I know a few people who have it. Yeah. How about your crisis there? Uh, my crises, man, I've been blessed. You know, as I've gotten older and time has gone by, I've had less and less uh, crises. When I was younger, I was in the hospital all the time. Uh, I actually learned how to make music in the hospital because it was like once you when you're in the hospital for like you know and you spend you know a two week stretch or a month stretch or a two month stretch, definitely, definitely. When you're in there that long, you know you hear all you know. You hear all the beeps and the blips, you know, and it's all these machines around you. And eventually what starts happening is like after, you know, the first day or two, you like, you notice them, you know, and then it comes to day three, they're getting a little louder. Day five and six, they're like making an orchestra. And it's a lot, you know what I mean? And it's like, and if you only stay there and you don't mentally do something or you don't, you don't be productive, or you're only watching the TV, it will consume you. You know what I mean? So it's like when I'm, oh, now there was a stretch where I was in the hospital for about a month and a half, two months. And it was like, if I didn't do something, I was just going to drown in those sounds. So I decided to make my own sound, you know. And I learned, um, I mean, at that time, it was, it was Fruity Loops. Yeah. It was Fruity Loops. So I was in a hospital bed with a laptop and just playing on a crack version of Fruity Loops. But, yeah, that's eventually how I got specifically into music production. Being that you're on the road a lot, mm -hmm. um, and, again, I don't know much about sick as well. Yeah. Do you? Does diet play a part of it? You have to be definitely, there. definitely. Diet, um, exercise, your general health, uh, you know, your metabolism, keeping your uh, immune system uh, strong. So being on the road is a, is a very, very interesting thing. Um, we were fortunate enough to, to be on the road last year with uh, Strome, actually. 
artist. Yeah, phenomenal, phenomenal uh, man and artist. Um, so yeah, we did. You know, we did a stretch with him where we got to go all around the world, um, and it was great. Um, and but you know, being on the road with having sickle cell disease was definitely a challenge. You know what I mean? Because you had to keep your general immune system going. When you're on the road, it's easy to eat poorly and eat junk food. Um, so you have to work that much harder to make sure that, like, on a base level, you know what I mean, your your general health is up. So, it, you know, it's definitely been a challenge, but it's been one that, uh, fortunately, you know what I mean, so far so good. And it's not even to our own fault, I'd say. I'd say that there's a, a, a conditioning that happens to where, you know, most people were concerned about our daily living, you know, and rightfully so. You know, some people are, are literally struggling every day to just make ends meet. 